You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at bbmglobalnetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Let's Make Life Happen with author and host Dr. Eva Shaw is a show that will help you understand about self-sabotage behavior that has caused patterns in relationships, career, financial stress, and health. The Let's Make Life Happen approach is one that intertwines with solution-focused and cognitive behavioral therapy. So please welcome the host of Let's Make Life Happen, Dr. Eva Shaw. Welcome to the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio with your host, Dr. Eva Shaw, and let's make life happen. Welcome to my show. Thanks for checking in today. I want you to know what my website address is right off the top, because at my website, you can find most any information that you'd like to know about me, about the show. Um, You can book an appointment with me there if you so choose. And when I say that, I mean, yes, you can come to my office. But my office is in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. And if you can't do that, then you can uh, talk to me by phone or you can talk to me uh, by video. And so that's kind of how it all works. So I always, at the beginning of my show, say this. Miracles happen when we show up. That sounds a little crazy maybe, but it is very, very true. And I think it's a great statement to start off with. We can't see a miracle or have a miracle in our life if we don't show up and accept it um, as such. So today we're going to be talking about friendship and the core of or the foundation, I guess, of my show is self-sabotage behavior. And you might wonder, well, how in the world are we going to talk about friendship for an hour? Well, going forward, you might see how that is possible, as I'm going to try and uh, and give a good show today around friendship. So the mission for my show, I always want you to know, is that I truly, in my heart, I want to be the person who makes your good days really exceptional. So if you're feeling good today, when the show's over, I hope you're feeling exceptionally good. And I want to help turn your bad days into a great learning experience if today's not such a good day for you. So I also want to mention right off the top that next week, the show is going to be about estrangement of a child. And it's a rather sad topic. Today's a fun topic. Next week's kind of a sad topic. But there are many, many families out there where a child has left. Sometimes they come back. Sometimes they don't. And when I mean child, I mean an adult child. So someone, either an adolescent or in their early adulthood or even later adulthood has just turned their back and walked away from their family. And so that's what next week um, I'm going to be talking about. And so if you know someone where this sad situation has happened to them, please let them know about the show. And it will, again, the same as this one, of course, be a call-in show. And they can call in with questions or whatever, and maybe I can help. So next week is estrangement of a child. But back to today. Today is on friendship. And so a thought is you don't change yourself. So that people will like you, what you do is you be yourself, and the right people will love the real you. This is really important when we're thinking about self-sabotage, because we raise our deserve level, so we will attract others who are at the same level 
of healing and growth in their life as we are. And that's really an important thing to remember. When I was planning the show uh, this week, I pulled out some of, which I often do, (laughs) some of my information. I'm a self-sabotage, a certified self-sabotage coach. I'm also a registered clinical counselor. And so I pulled out some of my self-sabotage coach information. And I want to just read you a couple of things because it really applies to what we're talking about today with friendship. So the challenge in adulthood is to create support systems for ourselves that draw upon several, who draw from, I can't read this morning. Okay, let me start that over again. The challenge in adulthood is to create support systems for ourselves that draw from several sources, including friends, mentors, and people other than a spouse or a significant other, because being another people person's sole emotional support is too big a burden to put on a relationship. So today you're going to hear me go back and forth a little bit to do with relationship with a spouse, because your spouse should be your very best friend, and so certainly applies to today's uh, talk. Gerald Jambolski, he wrote a bestseller, and it's called Love is Letting Go of Fear. Love is letting go of fear. And this is what he says. Here's a quote. The law of the world is based on a belief in scarcity. That means that whenever we give something to someone, we lose it. We must then constantly be on the lookout to get our needs met. We must search and search to fill our empty well. And that's our emotional well. We live in a belief of emptiness and constant need. We try to fill those needs through getting other people to love us or to give to us. One more thing with this. Far from being a sign of weakness, asking for and receiving support from others is a part of being a deserving, strong, and self-sufficient person. Really strong people value themselves, and take care of their human needs. They don't like feeling hurt or depressed, so they ask for the support they need, and they aren't critical of themselves when they need it. It's called being human, but it's also called knowing knowing yourself well enough to know what it is that you need and then go forward asking for that. Again, this is self-sabotage stuff that we're talking about here. Um, For those of you who have been listening consistently, this is the seventh show that I have done. You know that I have told you a whole lot of my story of how I have self-sabotaged in my life and what the outcomes have been and how I have learned and journeyed through many difficult times in my life. I don't look at it that I have more difficult lives, uh, parts in my life than anybody else, but other people sometimes do. I know that from comments that they give to me. Um, so, so we have to really focus on our own self-care, and we have to focus on looking after and knowing what it is that we need. One of the things that I will tell you this morning that we all need in our life is friends. And again, as I sit in my office and I work with people day in and day out, I have so many people that come in that have a very small, if any, friendship base. Some people that come in have no family support and they have no friends. And so at that time, we have to work with other things in their life that are positive and help to build that friendship base. So now I'm coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, and you are listening to Let's Make Life Happen with your host, Dr. Eva Shaw, and I'll be back in a minute. Essential Nutrients LLC is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, 
Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients, LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of Essential Liquid Nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take Essential products today and start to measure the difference. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkalife, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. I'm Dr. Eva Shaw, and this is Let's Make Life Happen. And we're coming to you today live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. So today our topic is friendship. And the the one thing I want you to know is that in my book, which is called The Butterfly Flies, uh, there is a chapter on friendship in which I tell you different things that I'm talking about this morning. And uh, I found I I felt when I was putting my book together that it was really important to have a chapter on friendship there. So someone bought my book this, well, I hope more than one person, but (laughs) someone bought the book and then gave me a comment this week. And I'm just going to uh, tell you what the comment was because it was very positive. Um, It said, Eva, what an amazing book. I don't know how to begin telling you just how meaningful it is. I'm only halfway through it, but I'm ordering more copies for my family and friends. And then after that, she sent me another message and she said, and I just wanted you to know that any book that causes me to cry and have tears and be that emotional (laughs) is a book that I just want to read and give to everyone. So that was uh, how she felt about the book. And so again, my book is called The Butterfly Flies. It's available from my website. It's also available on Amazon and Barnes & Noble websites. And uh, it's going to be available. It's just now coming out. It's brand new. So that's why everything isn't quite in place yet. But it's going to be out in major bookstores as well very shortly. It's also now out in ebook, I may say, too. So we're talking about friendship. So um, the characteristics of friendship include, and I'm going to give a list, so hold on. Characteristics include affection, kindness, love, virtue, sympathy, empathy, honesty, altruism, and what that is is well-being, loyalty, mutual understanding and compassion, enjoyment of each other's company, trust and the ability to be oneself, Express one's feelings to others and make mistakes without fear of judgment from the friend. That's what a characteristics of a friendship is. So that's characteristics of what should be in your uh, marriage or long-term relationship because that needs to be best friends. And when you have your circle of friends, these are the characteristics that need to be there in a friendship. 
I hear lots of stories about friends and friendships and, of course, love relationships, uh, where it's, it's a lot of turmoil and a lot of stress and a lot of strife and a lot of all kinds of negative things. Um, and so where I take people is I take them back to this. Friendship is about these amazing and wonderful things like affection, kindness, love, virtue, sympathy, those things. So some friends are with us for a short time and others are with us for a lifetime. The thing about friendship and the, I, I kind of look at the world this way, that most anyone that comes into my life has come into my life for a reason. They can teach me, they can show me whatever. Sometimes it's positive, sometimes it's negative. And some of those people that come in are just there for a, a flash of time. Um, we may not even call them a friend because there hasn't been enough time for friendship to build. But people are really important. And long-term friendships are important too. Uh, so... I've put together a little bit of a how 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 different stages of life looks with regards to friends, and that's where I'm going to go to with you now. So we start out with childhood friends, which is very different than adult friends for sure. So if you were to ask a child who their friend is, they would likely say to you, "Well, Joey's my friend," or they might give you a name. If you ask further, why is he your friend? They might tell you something like, we like to play games. Or, I like visiting his house. Things like that is what a child would say. And this is a relatively young child, under grade five. So in other words, a childhood friend often lives close to the child, like next door. They like doing similar things, and sometimes they walk to school together, that kind of thing. So physical proximity, common activities, and shared ex expectations are involved in being childhood friends. So I want you to think back as you're listening today, who were your childhood friends? Who do you remember as being those first children that uh, you were friends with. As a child gets a little older, they aren't so individualized. It's not so me, me, me anymore as they get older. And they begin to start to enjoy playing in groups. Then they also experience peer rejection because in groups, peer rejection happens quite often. And so it's a learning time for that child. And peer rejection is one of the things that they learn. And there's lots of tears shed around that usually. And establishing good friendships at a young age helps a child to be better integrated in society later in life. So do you see how important that is? It helps the child to be better integrated into our society later on in their life. Now, 75% of preschool children usually have at least one friend. This is from a, a one or two studies that I pulled. 75% preschool children, so under the age of five, usually have at least one friend. Well, they do if parents have made the effort to put times in place for that child to be able to have that friend. 15% of children are thought to be chronic friendless which I that brought tears to my eyes 15% have no friends it's very sad friendship through to the fifth grade is important to have the opportunity to learn about things like empathy and problem solving two very very important things in our life empathy and problem solving and those are under the age of whatever fifth grade is so this is let's make life happen with your host dr eva shaw on the bbm global network and tune in radio we are live and i'll be right back with friendship 
Dr. Rob Moyer is the director of the Ocean River Institute, and he is passionate about saving the ocean by helping dolphins suffering from nitrogen pollution. Nitrogen is a dangerous pollutant, affecting our oceans, altering ocean ecosystems, and contributing to global warming. The Ocean River Institute provides opportunities to make a difference and encourages people to go the distance for savvy stewardship of a greater and bluer planet Earth. Partnered with organizations from Massachusetts to Florida, Alaska to the Caribbean, the Ocean River Institute's mission is to foster involvement in conservation and environmental monitoring by facilitating grassroots efforts at local and regional levels. Hello, I'm Rob Moyer of the Ocean River Institute. Please visit our website at oceanriver.org. Sign up for free e-alerts. You may call us at 617-661-6647. Our email address is info at Ocean River. Become informed and then act with us. Thank you. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia daly Lipe is a Renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real-life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Life's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. Let's Make Life Happen comes to you today live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And I am your host, Dr. Eva Shaw. And today we're talking about friendship. I want to give you my website again. My website address is makelifehappen.info. And that's the place where you can find most things that you would like to know about me. Or the show is on there as well. You can also send me your questions or your comments if you don't want to call the show. Uh, And you can send them to E. Shaw, my first initial, Eva E. Shaw at makelifehappen.info. So we started out talking about uh, childhood friends a few minutes ago. And it's really important to know that 75% of preschool children usually have at least one friend. That's where friendships begin. Parents have an integral part of all of this with kids, of course. Mums and dads are really important people, especially for children under the age of six. Robert Selman's research describes it well when he points out that in children's friendship building reflects an increasing capacity to understand an other person's perspective. So, I want it my way. So where where it starts out, it's a me, me, me thing. Then next becomes what's in it for me. And then the next thing with the child, it becomes this has to be by the rules. And then caring and sharing and friends through thick and thin. That's how friendships are built through our lifetime. So in adolescence, we're skipping up here from grade five, which would be, I guess, age 10, somewhere around there. Now we're skipping into adolescence and adolescence really begins at the age of 12, I would say. So at that time, this is where mums and dads go, oh, no, adolescence, here we go. I'll tell you something that in my practice, I love working with adolescents. They are the most interesting clients probably that I ever have. Uh, Some of them want to talk. Some of them don't want to talk. Some of them uh, want to talk about all kinds of problems. Some of them tell me all about their friends and and uh, tell me things about their parents they've probably never told anybody before. Oh dear, parents, you won't want to bring your your adolescent in for counseling when I say that. Maybe, but it's true. They and they need to be able to do that. And they need to have a safe person 
uh, and some of them feel very safe in counseling and some of them uh, feel like they're forced to come in and that doesn't always work out so well. Adolescents are absolutely amazing people and they are our future generation and we have to always remember that. So with adolescents, friendships become more giving, sharing, frank, absolutely, supportive, and spontaneous. Reciprocal relationships are sought out. So relationships begin to maintain a focus on shared values, loyalty, and common interests. And I know adolescents often have kind of a bad reputation because of the drugs and the alcohol and all of those kinds of things. But you know what? Kids are seeking to be accepted. And they really are seeking out relationships where they can be accepted. And if they have a good history and they have people that they can talk to, they will. And they'll, um, they'll find people who actually share in their value system. And, of course, it's parents and teachers and all of that that give this to kids, to give them stability when they get to be an adolescent where they're wanting to find life on their own. They really aren't. They aren't really wanting to do that. They want security and they want to know that they're loved and that they're cared about, even though their behavior doesn't always show that. So post-secondary education friendships, so college, university, those kinds of years, what happens there? A study um, study by researchers from Purdue University found that friendships formed during post-secondary education last longer than friendships that were formed earlier. So the long-lasting friendships often come when someone gets into college or university and they're looking at taking the next step into adult life. They think they're already there, but they're not. They're taking that next step later on into adult life with the responsibility that comes with that. And so those are the friendships that usually stick. So adults over the age of 25 who are seeking a partner in life, this partner will be your best friend or hopefully will be your best friend And then during, we'll say marriage, the first year of marriage, partners usually return to previous relationships or make new same-sex friends, and together they make couple friends. And then as children arrive, friendships may change or may stay the same depending upon children. Often friends are made because of children, There's things like the sleepovers and the birthday parties and different groups and all of that kind of thing that happen um, as an adult when a person has gotten to that place in life. So I'm hoping that you'll be able to follow this and just see how friendships are built and how other people come into our life. And again, as I say, that doesn't always happen for some people, but it is an important thing. And a lot of what I do in therapy is help people to start building some of these relationships that are so very, very important. And then there's the last stage of life, which is the older adults. So seniors, what about that? How important are friends to them? Well, research within the past four decades has shown that older adults report the highest levels of happiness and general being when they have strong, close ties to numerous friends. Friendships can provide links to the larger community. Friendships also help protect against things like, uh, the, the awful things like depression, loneliness, those kinds of things that older adults often feel because they don't always have family close and so on. And friends are really important to them. 
So we're going to take another break. And so it's Let's Make Life Happen coming to you today live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And I'm your host, Dr. Eva Shaw, and I'll be right back. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 BC when the Sumerians invented the first written language and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 BC to the time that men began achieving political power around 3000 BC. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Are you looking for employment and live in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is the place for you. Are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is for you. Employers, JobsAnnex.com is your resource for career-minded people. JobsAnnex.com is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at JobsAnnex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. JobsAnnex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. You are listening to Let's Make Life Happen with your host, Dr. Eva Shaw, live on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And we're talking today about friendship and friends. And I've just taken you through the series of life stages uh, and friendships and how friendships are built and what friendships mean in those different stages. And so I'm just going to come back to older adults where we left off before the break. And with, with older adults, with seniors, oftentimes a partner has been lost, usually to death, and Sometimes, even these days, there's divorces at that age, which is extremely difficult for people. And depression and loneliness and those kinds of things set up. And a lot of anxiety happens. Sometimes there's not family around. The way that we live these days, we're spread out across the whole of the continent. Families aren't all living in the same little town anymore. And so sometimes families a long distance away and that elderly person can't have them surrounding with her. So friends are really, really important. And older adults who are in declining health, who remain in contact with friends, show much improved psychological well-being. And I believe this is just me, but I believe that having friends in life helps us have a longer life, certainly helps us to have a better quality of life. So here is a statement that Ann Landers made. I don't know. Do you remember Ann Landers? I sure do. She uh, she was an awesome person and she had many, many great things to say. So this is one of her statements. She said, love is friendship that has caught fire. Ha. <laughs> It's quiet understanding, it's mutual confidence, it's sharing, and it's forgiving. It is loyalty through good and bad times. It settles for less than perfection, and it makes allowances for human weaknesses. So thank you, Ann Landers, for that. That was great. And then another um, person that you probably know the name of is Ralph Waldo Emerson, who's a a wonderful poet, and he just said this little short line that says so much. He says, the only way to have a friend is to be one. That's an awesome, wise statement. 
And the last one I'm going to give to you is uh, the greatest gift of life is friendship, and I have received it. And it was Hubert H. Humphrey that said that. The greatest gift of life is friendship, and I have received it. In my book, The Butterfly Flies, I tell you about uh, some friendships that I've had during my life. It's a little short chapter, but it's a, an enlightening chapter, and it tells you different things that I'm telling you this morning. So when we look at friendships, we have to think of a picture. For those of you who are getting to know me, you know I talk a lot in pictures. I'm a storyteller who talks in pictures. Isn't that an interesting uh, thought? The, the picture that I want you to just picture in your mind is one of four, yeah, four uh, circles. So you start with a big circle, and then you go down to a small circle in the middle. In the middle, if you're drawing this, put your, your name, this is me, in the middle of it. And this is going to be a picture of your friendships. And so the first small circle that circles you in the middle, that would be where your close friends are. And then the next circle would be where your casual friends are. And then the next circle out would be your acquaintances. And then the one, the furthest out, the furthest away from you, would be your social media friends. I had to get that in there because I know that's going on in everybody's mind, social media friendships, and I'll talk about that in a minute. So let's come back to the picture and let's think about those close friends that are closest to you. Those are the ones that you tell your innermost secrets to. You talk openly to them without holding back. Now, I'm female, I think you know that, and this sounds like female statements, and it probably is more female than, than male, because male friendships and close friends, the buds, so the guys call them, um, it, it work a little bit differently than this, but anyway, this will give you the idea. So close friends are those that you tell your innermost secrets to, and I know there are some guys that build those kinds of relationships too. You talk openly without holding back. You're able to discuss hurts and pain as well as victories and success without having any malice or jealousy between the two of you. The friend can be honest and also totally accepting of the person and the person's view, even if they don't agree with it. Kindness and generosity is there too. Lots of kindness. Usually lots of time is spent with this person because it takes time to keep relationships close. Usually you just can't just forget about your relationships or they just go away. However, if a close friendship is built and you have to be apart, like I said before, we are spread across continents these days and across oceans sometimes. And if there's a period of time where you have to be apart, then a really good friend, when you come back together and you start to talk, it'll be like as if no time has passed. You trust them explicitly. You call them when things happen. Usually a person has one to four close friends, but often only one. There is a saying somewhere out there that says if you have one close friend, you are, uh, that is very, very special. Make sure you realize that. So I had a close friend, uh, one that I met when I was 13 years old. She's still my friend to this day. She and I are across the country from each other. But she and I, um, we have always kept our friendship. I remember when I was 13 years old, and she was too, and we were at our high school that we would be attending the next year, and we were both scared to death. We didn't know each other. We'd never seen each other. We were sitting in the, cafe we were sitting in the cafeteria across from each other, and I looked at her and I said, will you be my friend? 
And she said, will you be mine? And we have been friends ever since. We're taking a break live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm Dr. Eva Shaw, and this is Let's Make Life Happen. Please stay tuned. Introducing BetterHomeAndGarden.com. That's www.BetterHomeAndGarden.com with just the letter N in Better Home and Garden. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the highest quality products on the market that are environmentally safe and effective and to make them available to you at the lowest possible prices. BetterHomeAndGarden.com understands that kind of creativity and do-it-yourself attitude. Thus, we developed our website, BetterHomeAndGarden.com. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the following products right online. Bath, bedding, collectibles, craft, sewing and hobby, food and beverage, furniture, home decor, kitchen and dining, lamps and lighting, large appliances, musical instruments, outdoor cooking, patio items, pet supplies, plant and garden, rug and floor covering, small appliances, travel and luggage, and so much more. Better Home and Garden is an online retailer offering a wide variety of high-quality brand name merchandise at discount prices. Our service is personal and we aim to please. Visit us at www.betterhomeandgarden.com. Make your home your own. French Rastafarian baker Chef Oug Mat is a fourth-generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Sheikh Uvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Ugmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoug.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. I'm Dr. Eva Shaw, and you are listening to Let's Make Life Happen. We're coming to you today live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And so we're talking about friendships today. And I was just telling you a little story about my close friend that I had met uh, as I started my first day in high school. Actually, it was a previous day that they get you integrated into high school. And uh, and I met her. I was 13. So was she. And I basically said to her, will you be my friend? And she said, will you be mine? And we have been friends ever since. So it's been a long, long, wonderful friendship. So let's go on to casual friends. Casual friends are those that you spend some time with, maybe more in a group. There are topics that you talk about and others that you don't. You attend activities together, maybe, and you see other pe- you see others at some activities that you go to. Your talking is a little more guarded. I kind of call this tea time friends or tea or coffee friends. And then the next circle, as I told you, the picture of friendships, that's what I'm going through, the acquaintance line or circle, is friends that you see and you wave at. Occasionally, you might do an activity with them, but they're not the first person that you think of when you're seeking a friendship. They're the outer circle of friends, and usually there are quite a few in that circle. The important thing to remember here is that you can move your friends from circle to circle as you want to. You're in control of this because... You can approach someone and begin to build a friendship with them if they're a casual friend, let's say. Well, and you decide that you would like to have another close friend. Well, then look, see who's in that casual friend circle and try and build relationship and close friendship with someone that you find there. So I suggest that you take an inventory often of your friendships. Sometimes friends can become toxic to us. Sometimes there can become a lot of negativity. And for that reason, there needs to be changes made in that friendship. You want your friendship circles to be positive. With saying that, we support one another. But we can't not keep things uh, negative or it becomes toxic. And you would need to remove that for a period of time, at least, from your life. 
I believe it's good if once a year we do an inventory. So maybe when in January, when you're looking at uh, things of change that you want to do in the new year, that's when you might look at your circle of friends inventory. And if you want more friends in your life, then take an, an inventory of your acquaintances and choose which ones you want to draw into your casual or your close friends circle. I actually have uh, two groups of women that are in my acquaintance and casual friend area. One is Womanition, and Womanition is a networking, a women's business networking group, just a fantastic, fabulous group. Um, there were 28 of those women and I that joined together and put together a book, and so I'm a co-author of Mentoring Women Leaders. And, uh, and so those are women that are acquaintances of mine. And another group is the Seroptimus group, which I respect highly. Seroptimus is a, a women's uh, group. It is worldwide. And what they do is they, one of the things that they do, they do a lot of things, but one of the things that they do is they help women who are struggling on their own, sometimes with children, to uh, be able to get some education to better their family. And so they have awards and grants, those kinds of things that they give out. And I was a recipient of one of those years ago when I was in university. And that award that I got helped me to be able to pay for my next semester of courses. And Seroptimus is very, very dear to my heart. Um, and again, a lot of acquaintances and casual friends and some good friends have come out of both of these groups in my life. So that just gives you a little illustration from my own life as to how friendships have developed for me. So I want to go to social media friendships because I know this is on everybody's mind or not everybody's, but most people's minds. What about these friendships? So when I was thinking about the show today, I knew that social media friendships would need to be addressed. I kind of wanted to avoid it, you know that, but I knew I had to say something. So for myself, becoming computer computer literate in the 90s I was somewhat behind in the times and in no way at that time did I have imagined that there would be such a thing as Facebook and LinkedIn and that those would be friends however I have found it to be really nice to be on Facebook and to keep in touch with kids that I went to school with and I grew up with who again are across the country from me now and it's really nice to see their families and to find out what careers they established and all of that kind of thing. Facebook is excellent for those kinds of things. However, there is the negative side. One thing is some people put all of their friendships on Facebook and or on social media of whatever they choose. And that's not, I don't believe, as a, a therapist and a counselor a good thing to do you need to have one-on-one -on -one friends that you actually do real things with um, and then again there's the teenagers and the adolescents that I love so dearly and what happens with teenagers sexting and young people talking to pedophiles inappropriate pictures that are sent out are common in my work teenagers often say to me they have lots of friends but with further questions, friends are friends on Facebook that they may have never met. Now, this is kind of the worst scenario that I could give to you because that's not always the case. There are good things there for adolescents as well. But oftentimes, if they don't have the boundaries and parents to help them and lots of different things are involved in this, they can get into big trouble. Parents get really frustrated because of lots of things with social media. And probably most importantly, parents are afraid for their child's protection. Kids can get hurt. So when I Googled, I just Googled social media friendships, and you might want to do this, and it brought up some pages, and I just want to read you the titles of the pages because I thought that was interesting. But I'm going to be back in a few minutes here, and so I need to tell you that I am Dr. Eva Shaw,
And this is Let's Make Life Happen. And I'm coming to you today live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapoulis drives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. And I'm coming to you live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Eva Shaw, and this is Let's Make Life Happen. We're talking today about friendship, and we're just about finished the hour. Remember I said in the beginning, can I really talk about friendship for an hour? Yeah, I can. (laughs) And so I want to come back to what I was saying. I was talking about Googling social media friendships. And you might want to do this. This is what I came up with. This is what it showed me, the different pages. And I think in itself they tell a story. So it says, personality predictors of social media usage and analysis of social media in rural life. Next one, social media and teen friendships. Next one, how social media is taking away from your friendships. Next one, we can only handle 150 friendships at a time. So what happens to our social energy when we're also interacting with thousands of other friends on social media? And why social media and friendship may not mix mix well. Read on to see how social networking can affect relationships. How social media has impacted friendship in a bad way. Signs that social media is ruining teen friendships. And the last two, are social media friends your real friends? How real are Facebook friends? So that's just a little bit on social media. That social media and friendships could be talked about for a couple of days probably. But that's a little synopsis. And so just to summarize where we've been and where we're going here. um, Friendships are close, casual, or a acquaintances that are all really necessary in one's life. Do an inventory of your friendships and see if there's any toxic relationships that need to be removed. And if there are any, then do it. Choose your friends carefully as they influence your life and you influence theirs. So a little bit now, um, information just about me and so on and so forth. I want you to remember you can call into the show 
with your questions, or you can email your questions to me at eshaw at makelifehappen.info, and I will answer your questions on the show. I really do like to have a conversation with my listeners, and I would really appreciate uh, some people to call in. Remember that what my website is makelifehappen.info. It's important to remember that it's uh, .info. So it's makelifehappen.info. I also want to stress one more time that the next that next week the show is going to be on estrangement from a child. And so if you know of anyone who is estranged from their child and going through a difficult or has been through a time with that, uh, let them know that they can call in with questions. Let them also know that they don't have to give their name uh, if they want to remain anonymous. That's certainly fine with me. And... I just, uh, I know that it's a very painful subject, but I felt that it's in my book. I I am estranged from a child, so I know this topic well. And uh, please tell anyone that you know of to call in. And last but not least, there's a quote, as I try to give you at the end of each show. It's, a smile hello could lead to a million things. So remember to smile. A smile hello could lead to a million things. And so I want to also tell you the comment again that came in with regards to my book, The Butterfly Flies. Um, R.S. said, Eva, what an amazing book. I don't know how to begin telling you just how meaningful it is. I'm only halfway through it, but I'm ordering more copies for my family and friends. And the book's title is The Butterfly Flies. So again, for another week, this is Let's Make Life Happen with your host, Dr. Eva Shaw, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Have a great week. You've been listening to Let's Make Life Happen with your host, Dr. Eva Shaw. To understand behavior and change your deserved level in life, to achieve health, happiness, and fulfillment, listen each week here on Dr. Eva Shaw's Let's Make Life Happen. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.